Hi everybody, welcome back to 10 Minute IO, where you'll find bite-sized information on all topics related to industrial organizational psychology. My name is Stephen Jung and I am an IO psychologist. Today we'll be talking about Lashi individual prediction tables. This is a continuation of our series on personnel decisions, part three. Just like the previous videos, let's say your organization is considering a new screening tool, an assessment tool, and that can be any one of these, structured behavioral interview, situational interview, and so on. The question here is how much utility does that assessment really have? Um, how much value will it provide your company? And there are various ways to do this. This is just one of the many techniques. Keep in mind that before you actually use a new assessment, one of the things that you'll want to do is to validate that assessment, meaning it is actually measuring what it's supposed to measure, uh, and it's actually providing the value that uh, it was intended. One way to do that is to utilize your existing employees in a technique called concurrent validation. What that means is that you will administer that assessment, the new assessment, on your existing employees. Uh, preferably in a specific role for which you'll be using this assessment. That way you have two pieces of information. One is their uh, scores on, the, on the, the new assessment, but you also have for each employee their most recent performance evaluation score. And when you correlate those two for every individual that, that has taken the assessment, then you have what's called a validity coefficient that I'll be talking about in a minute. So here, I'll show you how to use this table. This, is, this table is actually very simple. The Lashi Individual Prediction Tables is designed to estimate uh, a given candidate's probability of success given his or her score on a chosen assessment. So you have test A, you administer that, and depending on where that person scores on that test, you'll be able to use this table to predict how likely that person, that candidate, will be successful in the, in the new role. So to use this table, you'll need three pieces of information. Similar to the previous lectures, you'll need the criterion-related validity coefficient. Again, this is the correlation between the scores on the new assessment and job performance. So you'll be administering this new assessment with your existing employees. That way you have both the job performance data and the, new, uh, the scores on the new assessment. Second piece of information is the performance base rate. We talked about this previously, but this is your percentage of your current employees considered to be high performers. If this is unknown, you can use 0.5, meaning half of the employees are above and half of the employees are below average. The third piece of information is candidate score on the new assessment. Candidates uh, scores should be divided into five levels. So if you have 10 employees, you can divide it into uh, five different segments. Two at the very top, two second, two in the third tier, and so on. Let's go through a quick example. We're going to use point three as the criterion related validity coefficient. And this is typical for a, a decent assessment, point three. Uh, point three here reflects the correlation between the scores on the new test or any test and uh, performance evaluation scores. When you correlate those two um, for a given test, you typically get somewhere between 0.25 and 0.35 for psychological assessments. We're going to assu assume 0.5 for the performance base rate. This means that 50% of your current employees are above average and 50% are below. This may differ depending on your firm. Some firms have uh, a smaller proportion of uh, their workforce uh, to be higher performers than um, other firms. Third, the candidate score on the new assessment. Let's say there are 10 candidates and that Joe Smith, hypothetical candidate, scored third highest, putting him in the second 20% band. Now with these three pieces of information, let's go back to the table. Let me just explain what these columns and rows represent. The R there that you see represents the validity coefficient. 
we said that the validity coefficient we'll be using is 3, or 0.30. On the left-hand side there, you'll see 30%, 40%, 50%, and so on. That's the current employee performance baseline. We said that if you didn't know that, you can use 50%. On the top, you'll see five columns, and this is the five different segments that you created for the, the performance levels. So five levels of candidate performance. Now let's go through the go through and read the table using the numbers that I provided earlier. We said that the performance baseline was 50%. We also said that the validity coefficient was going to be 0.3. Joe Smith scored in the second 20% band. So you can see the three red circles there. The intersection you see there says 57. What that means is if you look at the bottom note there, the 57 there represents or indicates the probability that the applicant, Joe Smith in this case, with a particular score will be a successful employee. So 0.57 can be interpreted as, given Joe's test score uh, on this new test, his probability of success on the job is 57%. If you were to use this new assessment to make a hiring decision for Joe, his likelihood of succeeding on the job is slightly above half. 57%. Now let's go through another example just so that you have it down pat. Let's say we change the criterion related validity coefficient from 0.3 to 0.6. Now this is a better test. Uh, it's double in terms of its um, correlation between again the test score and performance evaluation. Let's keep the performance base rate the same at 0.5 or 50%. Uh, but let's change the, the candidate score uh, to from the second band to the first band. So there are 10 candidates, and then Joe, this time, obtained a highest score, putting him in the first 20% band. Now we would expect, given that it's a better test, and Joe scored in a higher or the, the first tier or first uh, band, we would expect Joe's probability of success on the new job uh, to be higher than 57% that we saw earlier. Now take a look at the table and we will go back and uh, look at the numbers. 50% baseline, performance baseline is what we said. But instead this time the test is better. Instead of 0.3 we have 0.6 as the uh, validity coefficient. Instead of scoring in the second tier, Joe has now scored in the top 20%. That takes us to 84. What that means, of course, is that given Joe's test score, his probability of success on the job is 84%. If you were to use this assessment to make a hiring decision for someone like Joe, his likelihood of succeeding on the job is very high at 84%. I hope that was helpful. Please join us next time. Uh, we'll have part four in pers personal decisions. Thanks for listening.